This is a very, very important cause. It's crucial to changing the future of our families, our, our women, our children. This could happen to anyone. Thank you, everybody. I'm free. Yvette Khabib just got her gag. I want to wish her a big muzzle dog. How to help people like you and how to help people for the future like her. We're trying to protect the future of this community, and it's not easy. About six months into waiting for my get, I went to a rabbi. The rabbi said, listen, it's probably just going to take two years, but I know that family. It's not going to it's not going to be an issue. Don't worry about it. When you're living it and someone says to you, it might just take two years. Just be patient. It is an incredibly terrible abuse from days, months, years, weeks to be stolen from a person's life. I think when I, when I first approached the rabbi, some of them just kind of brushed it aside. Like the abuse didn't exist. One of the rabbis was telling me how I should talk in a calmer voice. I should have dinner on the table when he comes home. I'll tell you this, I've come to this decision that I'm not going to let him extort me to receive a get. I might not. I, I might not. I might. I probably won't. I don't really believe that I will. lasted for a few days. Uh, it became very apparent that the person I had married was uh, extremely unwell. Um, the get process I only took the better part of a year. The first person that I spoke to originally was the community shoulder of, um, and I expressed that I felt unsafe, and his response was that I should give my husband more hugs and kisses. I wasn't even aware that I had any rights for the divorce. I was presented as it as in, you have to give in to everything he asks in order to get the gift. I was encouraged not to hire a lawyer. I was extorted for pretty much everything. I was forced to pay for the get. I was forced to go through several pregnancy tests that were not required to court. I lost personal possessions as well. So this was all uh, through the base thing. I think that the system really played a large part in how this happened. I came from a traditional Orthodox home and I was getting tremendous pressure from everybody around me to keep make the marriage work. There's nothing we could do over and over and over again. I'm a social person. It was really, really uh, taking a toll on my uh, spiritual health. I felt very, very tied down and we went to court and he asked for an exorbitant amount of money at the Betin. They wanted me to accept it or so they said. Um, I wouldn't accept it. I think he said he was going to the bathroom and he just left. So then it was another week and another week and another week. Uh, and community tried to raise money for me, which is amazing. But I would, I, how could you reward somebody that's holding your life? So I told them that was abuse. Um, they understand physical abuse when everything's like any other type of abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse, financial abuse, um, emotional abuse. They didn't quite understand that. A year later, I get a call. Now I understand. And this happened with every single Rav involved. For two years, I was just chasing people and calling, calling, calling. I never felt like anyone really wanted to help. Like when I actually called up a Rav and he said, he said to me, you're an Aguna. I said, okay, so what do I do about it? I don't know Halakha. Can you please explain to me what the steps are? Like, what do I do? He's like, I can't help you. I don't know. You're stuck. When you're waiting for a get, you're like, this may never end. After being married for 10 years or 12 years and it was quite rocky, um, I ended up speaking to some people about, uh, about a get and about leaving him, but he always threatened that he was going to take the children away from me. You know, financially, I didn't have any money. He wouldn't let me work. He was completely controlling in running my life. But when I finally went to the rabbis who reached out to him and they even wrote up divorce uh, papers, um, he refused to give me anything. Um, and he dragged that on for a couple of years. Over 18 years ago, when my husband and I were dating, his aunt gave a talk at Stern College. She had been in Aguna for many years. She was freed by then. And she spoke about the importance of a halachic prina. And I decided then and there that I would only marry my husband with a halachic prina. I'm so disappointed, frankly, that this is still an issue. 
The Aguna crisis is not just a crisis for the Aguna. It is not even just a women's crisis. It is a crisis for the entire Jewish community. It is a systemic problem, and we need to face it as a community, and we need to take action now. However, there are a lot of rabbis who do not take it seriously. So there's a woman crying, begging for her debt, begging for her freedom, but more than empathy. It's, it's breathing, it's living, it's understanding what these women go through, what it's like that they're, they're fertile, years they want to have babies they're they're going out the window they want to get married they don't have a life partner they want to share their lives with they can't אני רוצה ללוות את הבת שלי לחופה עם שמחה מלאה אבל אני לא יכולה אני באמת מפחדת my my question to people who say there's a slippery slope is well, why do you why do you not care about the cliff that we're falling off right now like we're falling off a cliff and jewish marriage is in crisis Agunot are a man-made halakha problem that have man-made and God-given halakha solution. And if there's one issue that we should be making a stand on and making change on, it's this. Coming together and supporting each other um, and saying, like, this is what we need to do for the future of Jewish marriage, and this is what we need to do to keep our community safe and to keep the people that we love and we care about safe. If the community wants it, it's going to happen no matter what. There are things that can be done now, this minute. Things can change to make things better for women and to make fewer of a in the Jewish community. Jewish marriage should be a beautiful thing. And Jewish marriage should be protected. And when there are Agunot and there are women who are chained and suffering, 17, 20, even 5, even 9 months, then Jewish marriage isn't being protected. And Jewish marriage doesn't have integrity. Each and every one of us can sign a prenup, sign a post up. Call the rabbis, no more sacrificing Jewish women on the altar of a good up. It's not okay. Jewish women are not accepting sacrifices. It's not happening anymore. This is where it starts. With all of us coming together and saying, it's not going to happen anymore. It's not going to happen to my daughters. It's not going to happen to my neighbors.